What's the word I'm looking for? I don't want to say some sort of racism, but I don't know what racism. Sexismist? I don't even know. Um, okay, I, I started talking without really thinking this through how I would put it, but like, what if boobs are what's keeping him sane and keeping him from going too far deep into that? You know it's going to happen! Anyways, I'm done. I just like stay on the fourth floor, hanging out. Nope, he's not dead. Fuck you. I'm not gonna talk about any of that. Mainly because I forgot half of it, but... Write it on your hand. Maybe you'll remember. Hello everybody, uh, welcome to the Pseudo Random Podcast. Uh, I'm your host CJ, here with me are the usual co-hosts, we have Dan. What's up? Uh, Roberto. Yo. And Clucker. How's it going? Alright, so... For anyone who doesn't know um, what the podcast is here, we do... Um, we recommend anime and manga to each other, like a book club, and then read them and talk about them, and, uh, yeah, that's, that's pretty much what we do. And then, um, one thing that comes with that, there's a big spoiler warning for everything we're, we're talking about today, which includes Outbreak Company and Lucifer and the Biscuit Hammer Volume 8 are the main topics, as well as just anime in general, because we sometimes forget to say a spoiler warning for a lot of things. And, um... So you, you may have just some random animes that we've seen or whatever spoiled for you. So um, let's go ahead and go over the agenda for today. We, uh, like I said, we're going to be talking about Outbreak Company as, lo- as, ah, as well as Lucifer and the Biscuit Hammer Volume 8 today, which are chapters 48 through 53. And then after that, we're going to be talking about other anime and manga we've been watching and reading throughout the week. And then we're going to go on to our random topic of the day, which, I mean, it's kind of worded weird but for now i have it worded as effective and ineffective use of death in anime and manga all right so let's go ahead and dive right into the outbreak company then um i'm the one who recommended this so i'll go ahead and give it a quick little description of uh essentially what it what it entails um so the the main guy is uh someone who's heavily obsessed with like anime and manga and all that and to the point where he knows more about it than most people in the world. Like, he's really high up there with his knowledge of it and everything. And he ended up taking this test online at one point that ended up actually being from the government. Where, uh, and he scored, like, pretty much perfect on it, on his, uh, just general otaku knowledge. And then he ended up getting kidnapped and taken to another world, which is, like, a fantasy world. Where they wanted him to essentially take a lot of the anime and manga and otaku culture and bring it over to this completely different world which is like an alternate dimension type of world and then just hilarity and stuff ensues from there so yep (laughs) this just show has like a very crazy premise to begin with but that i like i really liked and it's funny because i I read the description go ahead i really enjoyed this series i knew you would the uh, hilarity of it is just fantastic like yep Uh, like how how he solves some of the issues that he's faced with is just fucking insane and awesome like i i really liked it this is also one of those things where it's like so meta because it (laughs) it is kind of an anime about anime uh and like all the other aspects of the otaku culture so it's kind of funny to see like some of the references that they put in there like i think in the beginning there's an episode where he he has just opened up the school where he's gonna teach the kids from this alternate dimension everything about otaku culture and he stopped like he's teaching them like making them read attack on titan or something like that or like something mimicking attack on titan uh and then on the next episode he's talking about like pretty much itchy shows and just like the different ways that they can depict girls in itchy shows and like parts of the female body <laughs> yeah um i don't know there, there are just a lot of cool things and references on it and like a good example for example is like whenever they have the beach episode like in the beginning of the episode the main character is literally like yes at last we're finally having the beach episode <laughs> that it's whenever there's self-aware. like there's like all the arguments and stuff he's literally like we need to solve this with sports because that's what yep. they do in anime <laughs> yeah. and manga. Yes, the soccer episode was great, man. I love that because, like, I did watch a little bit of a uh, a soccer anime as a as a kid. It's it's probably the most famous one, though. I can't remember the the name now. Roberto might know. I don't know, but it was kind of popular here in uh, the Brazilian Cartoon Network a few years ago. And that's pretty much how it was. Like, of course, they took it, like, way over the top, but it was, like, full of, like, special names for every kind of, like, for all the ways they could shoot the ball at the goal and all that kind of, like, crazy stuff happening at the field. So they just took it, like, that and multiplied by a thousand and then made that episode and it was great. Yeah. I love the comedy on this in general. 
So what do you think, Roberta? So I didn't really love it, but I didn't really hate it either. Ooh, okay. Yeah. I guess the biggest, my biggest complaint was I think it lacked a little substance. Yeah. Because I love, That's I true. love the world that they created, and they brought in all these kind of colorful races and magic and all that stuff, and they just like it's there, you know. I think I had more fun trying to pick out references in the show more than anything, just everything in the background and stuff. I mean, the comedy right. was good. I won't, I won't take that away from it. It's definitely sure. all there. Yeah, it's uh, that's that's one of the reasons why it's not like one of my top anime because it it does not have the substance and everything, but. Yeah. It definitely is something that's just like if you want just some stupid dumb like comedy fun, you just watch this. It's fucking perfect. It's great. Yeah, like yep, definitely. This this is a type of like stupid dumb comedy that doesn't really have much to it that I prefer much over anything like Yuri Yuri or Lucky Star or anything like that. Like this is about as far as I can go towards that, I guess. <laughs> Which is just like the dumb comedy that doesn't really matter too much. Right. But um yeah, yeah. I, I would say I wasn't like blown away by it either, but I just thought like as as kind of an episodic, lighthearted comedy was pretty good. Like I think it it succeeded in achieving what it set out to do from the beginning. Like mm-hmm. I never thought it was gonna be this very like substance heavy show with like a deep plot or whatever. Uh, I mean, the like from the get go, it's it's kind of a a very crazy premise, right? Like they just they they know about this other dimension and the the best way they could figure out to interact with them is by getting this random kid who's a shut-in that knows a lot about anime and manga and just send him there to teach people about anime and manga. It's like, it's, it's crazy and ridiculous from the beginning. So I never really expected it to become like super deep or with a lot of substance. In fact, I was even surprised by the twist in the end, uh, which you guys can decide if we talk about it now or maybe leave it for a little later. Well, if you already brought it up, go ahead. All right. So at the end, they essentially revealed that it was all planned from the Japanese government to essentially control this other uh, world or dimension by getting them addicted to the otaku culture and then being able to control the export of that to their country. Uh, so essentially doing somewhat of a cultural inv- invasion and using that on their favor. Um, and I, I never thought like at any point that the anime would even go that route. I was a little iffy on that Japanese guy. Um, I think his name was Matoba. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. In the beginning, he like I don't know. He looked. He looked. He didn't look that trustworthy, in my opinion, as as the other car- characters did. So I, w- I was a little iffy on him. But with time, I ended up not caring that much. And at the end, he was actually working for the the Japanese government, and it was all a plan all along to to take control of this this other country. But he still ended up being kind of cool at the end. So whatever. Um, mm-hmm. I don't know. I just thought the twist was a pretty genius thing that they did. Because uh, I kind of didn't see it coming at all. And it made sense. Like, I, I, I had never... It made me think, like, holy shit. Yeah, like, they could actually pretty much dominate this other world by just doing that. Like, just through that somewhat ridiculous means. Yeah. Yeah, that was when I was really starting to take interest. I think I would have liked for them to have built on that plot point earlier. And not right. just kind of save it for the last two episodes. Yep, that's true. Yeah, if there was more build up to that, it actually would be rated a little bit higher, in my opinion. Uh, Thinking about it, I don't know if there's actually a manga for this. It may actually go much more in depth. I don't know. I think it's based off some light novels. Let me take a look. It seems it. The series seems like it'd be based off some light novels. Um, but uh, one episode I really liked, and this is mainly because like there was kind of. The the main character showed, um, I guess it was uh, the princess of the land, I'm pretty Empress. sure. Empress. Petrolka. Empress. Yeah. Empress, my bad. He showed her what his life was when he used oh, to yeah. live in Japan. And I like I thought that was cool that they had an episode where he was like, Hey, you're sick of your responsibilities? Well, here's what I used to do. So right. it was it was it was kind of a little cool episode I saw. Um yeah, every every episode kind of had its like self-contained little fun jokes and stuff. Like, yeah, as as one of the themes uh, for the episode, I also really appreciated the Fujoshi character Minori, who yep. like she would she would try to, and I I, I kind of <laughs> wish that had developed a little more because I think it would have been funny if they like went a little further with that, like <laughs> with uh, sure you did, Dan. Yeah, <laughs> I think his name was Ga- Galius, the 
the, was the, the, the Empress, yeah, the, the Empress cousin, and also her knight, uh, where like they would keep joking around that that as as if he had some sort of sexual interest in the main character, um, and I I don't know, I just thought some of the things they did with that were pretty funny. Like I think there's even one point where the girl mentions it, like mentions that, like I think she she lends him um, a yaoi manga or something. And then, yeah, and then she talks about how, like, they could be a couple. And the main character, Junishi, uh, is that, is it? Oh, yeah, Sh- Shinishi. Shinishi. Yeah, is like, oh, my God, please stop that. Like, can you, can you believe that? And the, and the knight actually just blushes <laughs> as if he was, he actually did have some formal interest in that stuff. So, I don't know, I just thought that was funny. Yeah, the a lot of the jokes that she makes and everything throughout the anime are great, because, like, I like whenever they're fighting in the school at one point, how she's talking about the importance of teaching them BL and everything like that. Yep. <laughs> uh, it's great, too, because, like, for the first, like, episode or two, you never would have known anything, like, about her being, like, yep. into anything like that. And then it just, whenever it finally does, it just, like, explodes out of her and stuff, and, oh, it's great. I, I didn't even think she was an otaku at all by any, like, shape yeah. or form in the beginning, and then suddenly it's it's like she just keeps bringing it up every single episode. Yeah. I'm curious if you guys will actually be able to figure out who my my favorite character of this is. Uh, I would say the Empress because she seems kind of like a tsun- tsundere. <laughs> no, not at all. Actually, uh, I hate her. Miso. Yeah, I was gonna say he doesn't. I I don't think he likes that. The maid. No, she was yeah, fine. Yep. Uh, wait. I actually have. I know. I know. You'll like the dwarf girl, the one that kept fighting with uh the elf. I mean, she was she was pretty cool, but she wasn't my favorite. Okay. Was it the dog girl? Yes. Elvia? Uh, Elvia? Yes. Oh, yeah. Elvia! Elvia, right. yeah. I just I just remembered that. I was like, wait, there was a werewolf girl, wasn't there? Yeah. yeah. She was She was probably my favorite, too. <laughs> just just random. I was curious how long it would take you guys to pick that up. But, yeah, she, she was great, though. She was an awesome character. Because, I she mean, was. she was very simplistic and everything in a lot of ways, but she was just adorable and funny all the time. And... Like, the episode where she's, like, going into heat and everything is fucking hilarious. <laughs> yeah. I, I did not fantastic. expect that. <laughs> yeah. Also, they are light novels. Outbreak Company began as a light novel series, and um, apparently it is finished. It finished last year, October 2nd of last year. So, it is a finished light novel series, so it does go way more in depth, it looks like. Yeah, because the anime stopped at the end of 2013. Yeah. So it looks they, like there's a lot more. Yeah. Yep. So it whether or not it continues, who knows? Probably not, but Yeah, I don't I don't know how well it's sold or anything, so I don't know if they're gonna like push for another season right. of it. I, I don't know. I don't know if they have enough. I think it would be pretty easy to make another season, honestly, because like the the good majority of the show is just kind of episodic um comedy and i mm-hmm. feel like they, they could just keep going with that like we didn't have we didn't see a hot springs episode we didn't see a school festival like there's still a lot of a lot of space for those kinds of things and and, <laughs> and i could just see the fucking main character yeah. freaking out about that for each one of those oh, two yep. oh my god um, and they could just keep like adding more girls to his harem as well like we see sometimes and and developing a yeah. little more into the the overall plot which, as as mentioned, there isn't a lot there, but like you could you could still do a little bit episode by episode. So. It, it is a little bit funny though how the night is kind of yep. in <laughs> a little bit. Yeah, because like a couple uh, scenes, it's like yeah. maybe a little bit, maybe he's part of it. Wasn't wasn't there a scene where like the main character was dreaming and he saw all the girls and then he sees like the night from his back and he's like, oh shit, time to wake up. <laughs> I I don't remember that like because I I didn't actually really okay. watch it. Um, before this, like a, I think I, I wasn't it sure about year. it because like there's there's the scene where he's dreaming and he definitely sees all the girls and then on the back there's someone else and like to my interpretation it was the knight from his back naked but I wasn't sure because like he could just I don't know so and and then he's like oh you're you're just maybe, talking about probably. what you wanted to see I mean then. I did want to see a little more <laughs> of that because I, I thought he was a fun element yeah oh yeah <laughs> I'm sure you did Dan I don't care God. <laughs> God damn it, Dan! Uh, <laughs> I, I thought he was funny. It was one of the like cool parts of the show, in my opinion. Yeah. Let's see. Also, they had that like very it. random episode where they go to <laughs> Japan. Like he goes to Japan with a maid in order to get some manga that he isn't being like delivered right or whatever. 
and they just spend like a day in Japan mm-hmm. and do nothing. <laughs> like they go to Akihabara and the, and that kind of stuff. So, dude, you gotta you gotta have like the trip episode. Oh yeah, that's the, right. <laughs> the date trip episode. That's essentially what that was. It was a date. The, they. Yeah, I was gonna say they either need a theme park or the trip episode, but they already got yep. the trip episode. Yeah. yeah. Also, I totally called this getting the hair and end. <laughs> so, yeah, expected. Um, well, it hasn't actually ended or anything yet. True. Technically, it could be more. Like the the actual content isn't ended as far as the light novels and stuff. So it could actually have a very different end. He could end up becoming like the fucking king or whatever of that world and something. Or having little werewolf babies or something. I don't know. Oh my know. god. <laughs> yeah, There's no, a no. variety of different ways all that just want, You just you <laughs> yeah, want it to have... <laughs> now you're projecting. I'm just saying, there could be a variety of different ends to that. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm just looking at the picture here and like those are the two that stand out the most. Which is the, the Empress girl and the um, the werewolf girl. I also loved when the kids started uh, arguing on, in school. Like about which game was better, which manga was better, or yeah. whatever. I don't know, and like just like the fucking bearded dwarf that was supposedly ten years old, <laughs> just like arguing <laughs> yeah, with uh, the love that part. elf girls and stuff. Dude, uh, I I loved that how they portrayed the kids with the yeah. dwarf like that. It was great. <laughs> yep. <laughs> <laughs> oh god. Yeah, they had a lot of really good episodes, and they did a really good job with um, with I guess. Um, great imagery when it came to the different races. So, like, the dwarves and the elves and everything else that was a part of the world that they were in. It was, it was really good. I thought it was oh, yeah, very they, well They did an overall a very good job of world building. Like, yeah, just the design of everything and everything was just great. Uh, the one thing I that I agree. thought was a little under development, uh, developed, that maybe they could, uh, do a little more in the next season is the whole conflict with the other country in that dimension, which I can't even remember the name now. Oh, the it starts with the yellow heart or um, something like that. I don't know, something like that. The werewolf girl was suspected to be a spy yep. from there, so they mentioned yeah. that a few times, but um, it ended up not really uh developing much. So that's that, that was just one of the things that I thought like if if they were going for a little more overall plot, they could. You could try to develop a little more, but I don't know, just just something I wanted to bring up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I feel like the series has a lot of options it could improve on, and that's that's cool that it has so many options that if they chose it, they could definitely improve it, and it could be, definitely be better. Um, which if they ever make a second season, I'd actually be very interested to see if they if they ever develop it more. Even if they don't, um, I'll definitely watch a second season. Right. It's true. It's true. No matter what, it's still good. Yeah, so. just the fan service and being able to like see more of the characters and stuff is already fun enough, I guess. To justify a watch. At sure, least, sure. But. The one thing, the one thing you point out is fan service, yep. Dan. I mean, it is Dan we're talking about here. <laughs> yep. I mean, come sure, on, like enough. this. This fair had enough. fan service for everyone, pretty much, right? <laughs> yeah, it did. Like, yeah. yeah. Elves, yeah. furries, yeah. lolis, maids, yaoi. <laughs> Like there was a little bit of everything in there, right? Well, it's 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 supposed to focus on the otaku culture. Exactly, the otaku like... culture isn't um what's the word I'm looking for? I don't want to say what's some sort of racism, but I don't know what racism. Sexismists? I don't even know. I don't even know. Mythical creatures? What are you talking about? I don't like even her. know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, like... <laughs> I'm so I mean, lost. I, I think you're talking about some type of discrimination, but I'm not sure what against. Yes. <laughs> what are they discriminating yes! against? I guess what maybe Clacker is trying to say I is that the Otaku culture has a lot of like people splitting into groups of uh, choosing certain kinds of characters or races of characters that they like, right? And that the show managed to kind of cover yes. all of those, or at least the vast majority of those. Oh, yes. all the tropes. Yeah. Yeah. The, the the otaku culture does not discriminate between mythical creatures or anything like that. They oh, no. all all the otakus love it all, all right. like in general. So okay, so uh, any final comments or anything on Outbreak Company here? Good series. Would like a second season. Yeah, to me, that's about it. There isn't like a lot going on uh, to talk about, but it was it was a fun watch. That's that's all I have to say. It was yeah. it was a fun. Uh, Kind of well set up comedy show, in my opinion. So that's all. All right, cool. Let's uh, let's 
Let's move on to Lucifer and the Biscuit Hammer, then. Which, I think, Clicker, you probably have your list of questions again ready. I have I have a big list of questions this time. So, I guess I'll start off with, um... What would you guys think about, um... The... Because I know in this one, Yui went to the funeral for his yeah. grandfather, yep. right? Okay. So, what would you guys think of that? You could definitely uh... tell it was something that was... He was much more at ease about because of he kind of like made amends with his granddad, but he still wasn't happy about it. I guess. Yeah, I felt like in this volume they are trying to portray how Yui's becoming a lot more like normal. <sighs> okay, I I started talking without really thinking this through how I would put it, but like the way in the yeah the way in the beginning he was kind of like mad at everything, mad at the world, and just like full of rage and fear, and now he's kind of becoming more more in ease with his life and his past and and he's happy about the companions that he found and everything so yeah i i just feel like he's becoming more human maybe is the word hmm. with 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 time and i i felt like they they kind of used some things in this volume to show that like he did actually cry um he, he didn't cry at the funeral i believe but there was a scene a little bit after where he was shown um in in his dream meeting his grandfather and and then crying so i don't know just just it, to me, it feels like he's becoming a little more accepting. Grown up. And grown, yeah. Grown that's up. a good word. He's maturing. Yeah, that, he's maturing. Yeah. That's a good point. Correct. Mm-hmm. Um, I, sorry to kind of like take this a little bit off topic because we're talking about volume eight, but just because I wasn't here last week, I just wanted to say like, I, I since I read both volumes recently, uh, volume seven was like really solid in my opinion like it was actually one of my favorites and like because it developed a lot into the turtle knight and the rooster knight uh duo i was kind of expecting one of them to die in that volume and i was really happy that 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 didn't happen so i don't know i just wanted to bring that up speaking of them being developed i will segue into my next question both them and the crow knight worked together to do a crazy attack what'd you guys think of their challenges they had to face when trying to do that wait i don't really see any challenges they had to face with that it was more them just trying it and making it work uh it's true. Just... it's true didn't, oh, they, go ahead, Dan. didn't they get together with the owl knight no no they got together with the crow knight the owl knight actually you got to see a little bit more of what his um uh, what his okay, because what are. I remember is the, like the Owl Knight and both of them being stuck in like a hole in the middle of a fight, uh, together, and the Owl Knight learned that he could heal by, by oh, that was, one of the girls. That was volume seven. We're talking oh, okay. about eight. Whatever. That was that was volume seven. That was when they were fighting the Ten Eyed Golem and they okay, fell inside right. of a cave, and that's when the Owl Knight learned a little bit more about his powers, and you even get to learn a little bit more about his. <laughs> powers in this volume yeah I, sure I like too. how in this volume um, they pretty much turn him into like just the mass healer <laughs> yep <laughs> that's like his job <laughs> he's pretty much the mass healer yeah he he is he is the party healer he is yeah. the white mage you do not <laughs> fuck with the white mage um all right so what you guys so after the whole f- oh wait yeah the magician there was actually a stipulation for this entire crazy game what did you guys think of that stipulation? You guys remember what that an stipulation is? It wasn't a regular stipulation. Well, good. Yeah, you're right. It was it, an additional rule. Whenever they were talking about that, it made me think that, man, he must be like even more important than he's been made out to be at this point. And I'm starting to think there may either be like some fourth mythical beast or one that's like above all them and his fucking little iguana is going to turn into a dragon <laughs> because that's what I want to happen. <laughs> Right. <laughs> oh, so I, CJ. I don't know. That's I am good. actually a little surprised that uh, um, Amamiya ended up not becoming one of the three mythical knights, and it ended up being just uh, the owl, the snake, and the horse. Because cause I, I totally thought, like, just because yep. he's the main character, that he would be one of them. But at the same time, it's kind of cool that they didn't go that route. But as CJ said, I wouldn't be surprised as if him uh, became something else eventually as well. Also, yeah. I love the the little like love interest between him and the Snake Knight. Oh yep. yeah, that's and fucking snake. great. Yep, <laughs> I, I was I was just about I, to I ask that. I actually like her more so, than the main girl, to be honest. I, I also think I do. Yeah. Really? <laughs> yeah. Really? Wow. Yeah. That's surprising. I, I know that if anything, um, he's gonna end up with a princess. So I don't. Really, that, I'm not really yeah. getting my hopes up, but I, I would rather him will... get uh, <laughs> him get her instead. That will. 
probably change, just so you guys know. But you will see what happens. I'll be interested to see your guys' opinion as it goes on further. So yeah, that was I really enjoyed that hilarious scene where she's making yeah. him like food and she was like she she actually knows. She knows that she's te- like he's teaming up with the princess to destroy the world. <laughs> and I loved the fact that she was just like, if I stop yeah, you, yeah, <laughs> that was amazing. And it was just like, what? That's, that's the thing what? that I just solidified. Like, yep, I love this girl. She's awesome. Yep. I like her more than like any of the other girls. Like that moment just solidified it. I mean, come on, because she's, she was already cooler anyway. Yeah. Like, she's a mythical knight, so she fights super well. Like she beat him in a fight. She cooks well. She she's, likes anime. She's a, uh, the closet cosplayer. Too, yeah, and she's a cosplayer. Yeah. She likes him and she's hot. Like he's he's, uh, he's wasting time by not going after her. But anyway, this is one of the and, few, few times I would probably actually agree wanted- with Dan, yep. <laughs> to be honest. Congratulations. You guys finally found yeah. something you can agree on. It only took um, us fucking what yeah. eight weeks of doing this podcast together. Eight weeks? We're doing this for a lot longer. <laughs> At this or point, twelve or whatever. I don't. Re- I don't know. I think. I think. I forgot we did. It's yeah. like sixteen. It's like sixteen. Know. But who's counting? I was just basing um, it off of the anyways. amount of volumes you read of. Oh yeah, Lucifer sure. And the sure. biscuit hammer, which is wrong. Uh, of so. Lucifer. Uh. Um. Anyways. Uh. So let's see. All What's right. my next question? Oh. All right. So. No, I was going to say that Shimaki, the black cat knight, uh, is becoming cooler at each fall, I guess. Well, just making, like, better golems and becoming, like, more important in the fights. Like, it seems like they wouldn't have any chance of beating the 11th eye golem if it wasn't for him and his three, like, creations at the end there. Yep. So, that moment, actually, um, actually, you know what? How about this? Roberto, tell him your favorite knight. Yes. The cat yeah, knight. no, it's great. Tell him why. That scene right there. Yeah, because of that scene right there, and then all the other stuff he does. <laughs> you my my favorite see. thing I've seen from him still is him just riding a mech like golem that he made and just laughing maniacally. <laughs> That's still <laughs> one of my favorite things from he, him. <laughs> he has one of the coolest powers because he's just like it. Like at the at the end of the volume, like he was explaining how he was able to do the three golems at once, and it was just like, oh my god, like it that that's cool, that's neat. And one reason why I really like this volume is because you get to see the eleven eyed golem just like he's struggling. He's struggling with who he is, what defines right. him as a person. And that's the first golem to do that. Like, that's the first golem you ever see who's like, what the fuck am I? And, like, he's going, like, right. insane over this. And that was actually really interesting, and I really enjoyed that. Um, but a question I have for you guys is, what do you guys think of when Yui had to climb the stairs? Oh, that was kind of cool to see him fight against uh, Shinonomi Hangetsu again. Yeah. And uh, the fact that, like... He, he kind of struggled in a fight, but he ultimately beat him. And then I could swear he would fight the swordfish knight as well, but he was just kind of there to see. And I also thought it was cool how they kind of like tied it in in a way that... So because the dog knight had had that dream before, it's almost as if in the very yep. beginning when he had that dream and he said that to Yui, he was essentially like living that moment in the past. Like, or he was in the past living a future moment through his dream. Uh, and I just thought, like, the, the connection and the yep. way they, they, they set that up was, was kind of pretty cool and smart. I mean, whenever he remembered what the Dog Knight told him, I remembered it as well. And I was like, holy shit, yeah, like, he did say that in the beginning. Uh, so it, it was all, like, coming together and tying in at that time. And, um, yeah, and then he gets up there and, and sees the hammer. I was so pissed off what when he guys? got to the top and it was just like, well, cutscene. It's like, no! Fuck you, tell me, why is he there? Yeah, like, I didn't And then eventually, I guess, at the end, of, yeah. You will see why he was there. Let me ask you this, are there any theories on where he was? Because oh he had a God, nice view of the biscuit so hammer. I have so many fucking theories right now that are ridiculous. Mm-hmm. One of my theories tell is me. that the hammer itself may be the 12 light golden. But I have no clue if that's right or not. Just something that passed through my mind. Because we haven't seen it's the 12 light golden yet. But interesting theory one of my biggest theories for this is actually which is completely wrong i'm almost positive it's wrong but it would just be really cool like plot wise to do something like this and i've seen it done before 
specifically in Mariah Nikki when we were doing that, <laughs> where it's like, what if he's actually Animus and the wizard and everything, and he ended up winning this and somehow becoming like godlike or something from that, and he just keeps going back in time to do this over and over again, Holy just shit. so he can spend time with the princess, who may end up being Anima or something, I don't fucking know. Hmm, There's a whole bunch that, of shit that could happen with that. That's a super interesting theory. And they keep referring to the fact that um, like this has happened before, you know? So it also yeah. leaves me thinking, like, mm-hmm. well, like if it happened before, and if Animus won, you know, like, the All Knight betrayed everyone, but tried to, to murder Animus, but Animus still managed to kill him and win the game, essentially. Why is it happening again? That is something that I do ask myself. Yeah. Like, if he won, this, shouldn't the world... This is also... Go ahead. Those questions will be answered, but you're going to have to wait. Well, um, no shit, Clucker. <laughs> <laughs> um, so... What'd you guys think of Domain Control Babylon? That was fucking cool as shit. Yep. It made it where he could actually use, like, because he's, he's good at, like, thinking about stuff, and it made yep. him where he can actually think better by... By slowing yeah. the opponent down and increasing his speed. Yeah, because then he can actually move and do stuff as fast as he can think. It'd yep. Great. And then it was really cool seeing him actually do that against the Snake Knight, which eventually she still won, but... I still think he should have whizzed past her. But first time um, he did that, though, you could immediately tell she was like, "Oh my god!" <laughs> you could tell that's the type oh of thing she god. was thinking. <laughs> oh god! Why didn't he do this earlier? Um, yeah. But uh, yeah, that was really cool. Um, Some very quick I, scene I love... of the manga that I appreciated. I, I I'm sorry, I can't quite remember if this was at the end of volume seven or this volume when like the horse knight is thinking about like all the knights he has left essentially and he kind of puts them into groups like those are the smart guys and then those are the fighter guys and then that was that was that was uh end of volume seven yeah and well, then... they did it in the middle of eight as well yeah i don't remember oh, what it was okay. but he was just like going through and then he had like the crazy type or something like that who were uh mikazuki the crown knight and the princess yeah i, know, I just thought that was kind of neat yeah. that was that was middle of eight that was after um that was after the, the cat defeat. knight was trying to figure out how to make different golems and everything. Right. Yeah, after pretty much the first defeat, which was the 11-eyed, like, golem just wrecked the fuck out of, like, the Black Knight's golem and was just like, yep. bitch, you have ten days, ten fucking days to impress me. See, I found it, like, very interesting whenever the Cat Knight found out that he was just, he he wasn't invincible, he just shapeshifted where, like, his arm's fallen off, and he just shaped just another arm there, or something pretty much, to make it look like he's fine, yeah, right. even though he's not. Yep. Like, I, I thought that was really interesting. <laughs> yep. I mean, it's a, it's a very um, good, uh, very good, like, mental tactic mm-hmm. for that. Because, I mean, if you keep hit hammering on someone, and you can't tell they're getting hurt, it can fuck with you pretty bad. Yep. Yep. Which is why, eventually, the Black Knight was just like, alright, three golems, constant slaughter, you're done. That's why I was super confused whenever he was like, oh, anything will do. He's just like, he's already fucked up, and just a little extra push will kill him, really. And then he makes cool shit anyway, but it was just funny whenever he thought that. Yeah. Yeah. Yep, yep. Um, is there anything else? Um, no, I think that, think that about covers it for this volume. Yep. The next volume is gonna be fantastic. Um, so now that the 11-eyed golem is dead, you're going to see the 12-eyed golem. Um, next volume, and... Well, don't give it away. Yep. What if we're, it was only going to be in the 10th, and now we know it's in the 9th? What the fuck, <laughs> Lecker? Sorry! You have to read the cover, and the cover tells you, hey... It happens, whatever. Anyways, I haven't gotten to the whatever. cover yet, Clucker. It's okay. It's okay. CJ! <laughs> That's fine. There's been a build-up since the beginning of the story! You know it's going to happen! Anyways, I'm done. Well, no. You don't know it's going to happen. There's not 12 volumes with the 12 golems. There's 10 volumes, meaning <laughs> multiple golems show up in some, but they don't have to show up in any of them. Ah, uh, CJ. Clicker just ruining everything. <laughs> Clicker? CJ just trolling the crap out of me. Uh, okay. So, um, yeah. So you guys are enjoying it still? Yep. Yeah, it's good. I, I really right, want the good. Snake Knight to win, though. <laughs> <laughs> you will see what happens. Oh, I'm sure I will. Wait, what um, if the Snake Knight is the one who actually gets turned into Anima? That'd be cool. Yeah. <laughs> if he's I, Animus and she's Anima, and they're together. 
All that. uh, that's uh, not gonna happen, CJ. Just let go of I it. I don't know. Just let it go. <laughs> let it go. I'm just saying, that'd be cool shit. Let it go. Yep. Uh, Alright, moving on then. Um, <laughs> hold on, lost my script. Ah, yes. Uh, other stuff we've been watching or reading. High School DXT! Okay. <laughs> Are you caught up on that, Dan? No, I, I as I said, I, I still haven't watched anything. I probably want that oh. soon. So just, I don't care. Just spoil it. I, I mean, I, I, I can All turn right. my ears off whenever you guys talk about it. I usually don't remember much after the episode ends. Okay. All right. Can we talk about it now? Sure. Yeah. yeah just go ahead. Okay. All right. So, I really enjoyed the episode for two reasons one there was some deep meaningful shit in it which was fantastic and two i'm glad that loki's curse actually came to be a thing oh yeah like it gave like, a perfect setup for like the last mini arc here yeah i oh, so sorry to interrupt but yeah. can you just also, say which episode uh come out came out this week because because this will go on like at some other time so it'd be uh, good for 10. listeners to know what you're talking about yeah episode 10 right came out and it was a very interesting episode because you got to see how loki's curse has not only affected isei but also how it's starting to affect rias mm -hmm. um you could tell the the and... doubt for her seems like it's that uh her doubt that like isei is gonna stop loving her or something like that is what it seems like yep yep either that or for a second i thought it was jealousy because of, like, the moment where Asya, like, heals Issei, and then just straight in for a kiss, and then I guess, like, that moment where she just, like, hesitates for a second. Uh, so I thought it was going to be jealousy, so I'm not sure if it's jealousy or if it's Issei's going to stop loving me. Um, it's something to do with that regardless. It's, yeah, it's something to do with that regardless, I, but it's... I, I think the resolution to make her believe that that's never going to be the case is something to do with him loving her boobs. Oh, you can count on it. <laughs> I could almost guarantee it. <laughs> yeah, you can count on it. Ah, <laughs> uh, he just goes into an epic spiel about how could I ever not love your boobs, Rius? Yep. Yeah. Um, that's very highly likely. Um, so, the other thing, um, I think about the series is I don't think it's gonna be a 12-episode season. Like, if it's a 12-episode season... They better make another season because they just brought up DD and they brought up like the goal, which is to beat DD. Well, this is actually and heading for the same end that uh, the last season had, which they literally unveiled Volley and then, oh, season's over. So, Moving season's on. Season's over. <laughs> yeah. So I hope they make another season because that would be terrible. Like, I hope, my hope is that this series will become kind of similar to Bake, where they just keep releasing very short seasons, but there's like a bajillion of them. <laughs> yeah, according to my animal list, um, this is indeed 12 episodes, but it probably won't take too long before they announce the next part. I, I don't, well, I mean, this, uh, this has been like one of the best seasons by far, and... Well, it's because of all the build-up like, they've done so far, like, they get to just maintain what they already have, and then go yeah. off on that, because they know exactly what their audience, like, is what? there for and exactly what the whole anime is derived off of. So they don't yeah. have to pretend they're something they're not, which is great. Yeah, I I was also really happy that Issei's like Issei's fear was he does like he's afraid of what girls actually feel for him, and that it's like <clears throat> that's very interesting. Was it that um, or no? That's what his fear was. His fear was because he mentions it. He's like, I'm scared. I'm scared to find out what girls oh, okay. actually think of me. And that was, like, for a dude that's in a harem, that's actually a very interesting fear. Mm -hmm. Like, a fear for, like, a fear for whether or not these girls actually like me, like, is a very interesting fear for a guy who's living a harem life. So, um, I really enjoyed that episode. I, the next episode seems super interesting, and I can't wait to see what happens. Yeah. I hope he learns to control Juggernaut Drive. That'd be cool. I mean, if Valley can do it, he can do it. In fact, I predict the world's biggest prediction right here that next episode he might learn to control it. T take a guess how he's going to learn to control it. Rius. <laughs> boobs. Rius Something boobs. To do with boobs. <laughs> Maybe that's the thing that he's. Or, right, actually. Yes, 
whenever he's talking to the fucking fallen angel guy. Because, like, there's something you were, like, holding on to there that, like, kept you, like, sane or whatever. What if it's just boobs? What if <laughs> boobs are what's keeping him sane and keeping him from going too far deep into that? I can see it. I can also see it. It um, would fit very well with the show, so... <laughs> it would! It definitely would. Uh, but, um... It was... It was a good episode. It was interesting seeing Asya take control of a situation for once. Oh, that, and her just fucking straight up just kissing him and everything out of nowhere. It's like, whoa, where did that come from? Yep. I mean, you knew it was coming, but you didn't know when. Yeah, I I didn't... technically... I didn't think she would actually straight up go after him like that yet. Well, they lost to her. Definitely lost to her. So, um, yeah. Uh, so, High School DxD, I read up on One Piece, I started watching more of One Piece again, and, um, Shogoku, Shogoku, Shogoki no Soma, I started watching that, which is Food Wars, which is... I need to watch that. It's Foodgasm, the series, so... I saw a clip like... of that with something to do with some, <laughs> like, pork roast making people's clothes explode. Yep! Yeah, it's like what the fuck? <laughs> that's that's episode one. It gets better. It's it's hilarious. You probably won't like the main character, CJ. Do you like cocky main characters? Depends. There, there's a lot of other factors that factor into that. Okay. Well, the guy, the main character, is very cocky, but very smart when it comes to making food. Um, he also loves feeding people terrible tasting shit. But also feeding them good shit. It's hmm. it's he's he's like a contradiction. He's pretty funny. Um, I would recommend giving it the two to three episode um watch like the two to three episode limit. Yeah, right. You will you will know by the end of it whether or not you like it. Um, just from that also, scene that I've seen, I'm like, yeah, I'll probably like this because it's ridiculous. Yeah, that, there's at least two of those scenes in every episode. Oh so. wow. <laughs> So that there's that. Um uh but I th- I feel like watching this show I could become a great cook, which is fantastic. I've actually um, heard of people that are watching the show and trying to follow the recipes and actually make the food in real life. And not it seems like not all of them work that well. I mean, and maybe people just don't know how to do them properly, but a good majority of them you can actually pay attention to the show and replicate in real life. So yeah, yeah that's cool. Yeah, it's it's really cool. It's really interesting. I really like it. Um, the manga is super long. It's actually a finished manga, um, so I can see the series going for a very long time. I don't know if what um, what I probably should just look at my anime list and see how long it's going to go because they would know. Um, anyways, yeah, so that's yeah. what I've been watching, and continue on. All right. Um, what else have you been watching or reading, Dan? Uh, actually, um. So my sister has been kind of insisting me on on me to watch one of the, the series that's coming out this uh, the season called Seraph of the End or Owari no Seraph yes. is the name in Japanese. Yes. Um, so I I kept like avoiding her until at one point I was I was going through my room and she was just waiting at the door and she was like, "Do you have something to do now?" And I couldn't think of anything in the spot. So I was like, uh, I don't know. And, and she was just like, "So we're watching this now." And then she just like <laughs> put it on the TV, and we we watch the Dude, first. The, right. the thing that makes that so much funnier is we since we've actually met your sister now, we can actually yep. see yep. her doing I that. Can, like I perfectly. can, I can see her doing <laughs> that. Just be like, what are are you doing anything now? No, we're watching this now. <laughs> <laughs> like I can see her doing that, no problem. <laughs> so I mean, we'll watch the f- first four episodes. I, Cla- are you watching it, Clacker? Um, no, I want to watch it. Okay, so um, I've. It's a show that's kind of hard to describe without spoiling, because there's kind of like a big deal that happens in the first episode that kind of sets up the whole story, and I don't want to spoil that, but that's kind of the setup of the show. But what I can say is that it's essentially uh, a society where, where vampires have to cover over because most of the human population died of a virus. And uh, the humans that are still alive, who are mostly kids, they, they're kept in like orphanages, where the vampires somewhat take care of them in exchange of being able to drink their blood. So the humans essentially serve as livestock for the vampires, while the vampires essentially let them survive, allow them to survive. Um, and then the main character, for some reasons, um, kind of ends up 
trying to become like a vampire hunter and kind of like free the the humans of the um but i i don't want to say a lot more but it's a cool series i i don't think at least from the four episodes i watched there wasn't anything that made me be like oh shit this is amazing i've never seen anything like it for the most part it just feels like a general action with somewhat of a well put together plot but i don't know it didn't call my attention that much but it's cool it's kind of cool i i I would call it good, not great, is what I'm saying, yeah. I guess. But Next time you talk to her about anime, make sure you tell her to watch uh, Orde Monogatari or My Love Story. I think she is watching it already. Okay, that's yes. good. Both both my siblings are following that one, actually. I think both my siblings are following that and uh, Food Wars as well, so this season. Nice. I'm the one who isn't being able to follow anything. Um, but yeah, honestly, love, that was... My Love st- Story has, like, the best hero of, like, romance anime ever, just Suda, <laughs> like... Every, like, romance anime needs to have him, and it'll be perfect. <laughs> <laughs> All right. But, yeah, that was about it. That's about it for me. So, whoever wants to go next. Hey, right, go ahead, Roberto. So, I watched the second Cardcaptor Sakura movie, because that one takes place after the story. I needed to watch it. Uh, let's see. I also watched uh, Gundam The Origin, pretty much how that whole universe started kind of thing. I also finished up re-watching one of my favorite series, Black Lagoon with Clecker. And a few yep. others. I actually remember when and you were they, watching that for the first time. Yep. It's so good. Still haven't ever tried to watch it. Because I think I tried to get you to watch it, right, Dan? I, I just remember, like, um, when we were in college, you would, like, get home every day and be like, I'm going to watch some more Black Lagoon tonight. Or something. That's like. right. So it's really good. Like, you have no idea. Let's it's, see. Uh, it's really good. Also, there's a female on there that is unstoppable named Roberta. <laughs> and she is physically unstoppable. She's also Colombian. Oh my She's god! Also Colombian. <laughs> okay. She is. She it's is perfect. female Roberto. It's perfect. So let's see. Uh, what else? Oh yeah, I read a little bit more of Suzuka. Not as much as I I had in the previous weeks. Been a little bit more busy with other things. Around where you up to now? Uh, I don't remember the number, but I remember like uh, Honoka started to come back into his life. Now that she's, like, a, a model or whatever. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And he's now, like, officially broken up with Suzuka. You know what was interesting, though, CJ? Hmm. Like, I, I I started reading it right after we finished recording last week's episode of Rumbling Hearts. And, like, the fir- and like within those couple chapters that I read, I'm like, wait a minute. Where have I seen this before? When, like, Yui throws himself- herself at him. Mm-hmm. When he's all depressed, I'm like, I've seen this somewhere before. Yep. We just talked about it. Yep. <laughs> you see, that's, um, like I said, when we were talking about Rumbling Hearts, that's something that didn't really bother me that much. They're just like all the other bullshit drama stuff. So that didn't really bother me in Suzuka. So It, it is right. funny, though. I forgot about that part until you brought it up there. We kind of did talk about the exact same type of thing, though. <laughs> yeah. So, so I'm interested to see where this is all going to go. If, if Yamato's going to like hook up with another girl in the meantime, or is he just going to... Stay single until Suzuka gets back or something. Yeah, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna talk about any of that. Yeah. Mainly because I forgot half of it, but <laughs> <laughs> I just remember and it was then, very uh, good. I watched. I watched my love story as well. Did you watch the one today? Yeah, I did. Okay, I haven't seen that one yet, so I did watch yeah. last week's so. though. Yeah, last week's was pretty good. Yeah, I like. I I wasn't. I I I wasn't expecting like Takeo just to run off like that and everything. And uh, I'm I'm glad Yamato took that very well too. Yeah. Like I thought something I mean, terrible I... was gonna happen when she started crying and everything. There, it's like, oh god, no, no. <laughs> but it was because she was just sad for him. Right. I figured it was gonna happen. He was he was pretty worried about Suna's dad. Yeah. And I love when like the doctor comes out. He starts shaking the doctor. <laughs> Shakes him so violently. <laughs> throws up and <laughs> yeah. Uh, that was funny. Yeah, we're talking about uh episode nine, by the way. I haven't seen ten, so. We're not going to talk about that for people curious at home listening. Yep, and that I think that about covers everything I watched last week. Nice. This week. All right. Well, I think um, yeah, I think you guys pretty much covered everything I've watched with the uh, high school DxD and my love story and all that stuff. So I don't really have anything to contribute. So yeah, except right. that uh, I got or I read more. Actually, oh Roberta, did you actually read the latest uh, Domestic Not Kanojo? Because they actually had 52. Oh, yeah. Yes, yes, that, I forgot about that. That was fucking crazy as shit. I forgot about that. Yeah. Like, I wasn't expecting them to just straight up get into a fist fight like that. 
I mean, I, I kind of half expected it, but like at first I thought he was just going to run in there and punch him. Like I thought he was going to be the first one to well, throw a punch. It's, it's kind of like what we talked about last week. I wasn't sure how they were actually going to handle that because I wasn't sure if they were going to actually go through with that type of scene and everything or if someone would come rescue her or whatever. Like, I wasn't sure what they were going to do because I don't really know this manga artist well enough to like know what they they would do in that situation really. Because right. like the whole the whole domestic Nakanojo ride has been great and it's taken twists I never would have thought could happen and all that. Like I think that's why I've enjoyed it so much. But I I am glad that they just got into a fight and nothing actually happened there because that could have made this this could have taken a much darker turn. Yeah, it really could have. It's actually kind of similar to what happened in another of her works, but I won't go into detail about that. I need to check out some of her other works. This one's been fucking fantastic. Yeah, definitely check out Good Ending. I really like that. That one. is on my list. I have not read that yet. Now that I know that's from the same author, which I think I've I've probably said this like twice by now, <laughs> knowing that it's from the same author, I'm going to put that higher on the list, but I'd never actually <laughs> go do that. <laughs> I'm... It's like me not updating my, my anime list. Yep, there you go. Except I'm actually making a note of it now where it's there now. I'm Fine, I'll there. make I'll make a note of my <laughs> anime list needs to be updated. Write it on your hand. <laughs> All right, fine. I'll write it on my hand. I come into work tomorrow. There's a note on my hand. Roberto just laughs. He just laughs. Asks if you did it. You're still still like, no, I didn't. <laughs> so disappointed. Um, but yeah, other than that, also read the latest Fuko, which came out today, which was sixty five, sixty three, sixty five. I want to say, and that was good. So yeah, I think that pretty much covers uh, stuff we've been watching or reading this week. So let's go ahead and move on to... And I lost it. There it is. Uh, the random topic of the day, which is effective and effective use of death in anime and just death in anime in general, how it relates to the plot and so on and so forth. Like, we can kind of expand upon it however we want to. So uh, I believe it was you, Roberto, who had this topic? Yep. All right. Well, let's see if you, you want to go ahead and start us off here then. Uh, a little... I, I didn't mean to interrupt, but I just wanted to add something before we start. This I just realized this is a topic where where we may have like very major spoilers about the yes. series that we talk about. Like it would be pretty much unavoidable. So it'd be oh, good yeah. if we just said the name of the series before saying anything else, so that if someone wants to skip that, they just skip it. You know? Yeah, this will be like one that. that's very important to make sure we get the description with all the times of what we talk about. Yep. And just like list off the animes that we talk about because that's going to be very dangerous otherwise. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> but with that being said, go ahead, Roberto. So, well, as we all know, death could be a, a very powerful element in storytelling at times. You know, when like a really good character just gets killed, the, I guess it could really take the story in a few ways. Like either makes it kind of sad, or you feel like oh, all the feels. <laughs> yeah. Or you feel like you want to avenge that character and you want to kind of like in uh, Gurren Lagann when Kamina dies. And oh, that God. See? <laughs> like, I didn't oh, know that. God. I haven't watched that yet. Yep. So, whatever. Sorry. I don't know who it is, so I don't really care. Yeah, whatever. So, so like, he's like, he's like one of the main characters and then he dies and, like, you kind of just feel, like, all with all the other characters, you want to avenge him and you're kind of riding this, this kind of wave. But then there's other cases in, like, Clan Ed, where one character dies, like Nagisa, and it's just depressing as shit, and you don't even <laughs> want to continue. See, this, this is effective and ineffective ways that uh, people dying in anime, right? So I think yeah. Clan Ed is probably one of the most powerful and effective ones that did that. And not, it's not like I've seen a lot, mm -hmm. so I can't really uh, speak I, 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 about other shows that, that did it well, because I'm sure I think CJ uh, knows a lot of those because he, he brings oh, up yeah. a few times. But uh, in Clan Edge, to me, the cool thing is that everything that everything that built up Nagisa's character through those, like, I don't know, like, fucking 40 episodes or, or whatever that was, because, like, the whole first season plus half, like, more than half of the second season, to me, I almost felt like that was a whole build up to her death. Because, like, yeah. when she dies, all those things, like, all those memories that you got from that character and all those things that you saw her go through, they come back and kind of... In a haunting See, that, way. You know? That is, like, the precise reason why the past two times I've... Well, I should say I've attempted to rewatch Clan Ad. I've always stopped an episode before that knowing what's about to come. It's like, I can't handle this right now. Right. I don't need to be depressed for a month again. 
I'm right. stopping here. <laughs> and one of the cool things is, like, I've seen shows where characters die, and they'll cry for, like, an episode or whatever, but then they kind of everybody just moves on. And the the way how, like, um, I for, Tomoya got, like, so depressed after Nagisa's death for, like, the next whatever many episodes of the series had. And, like, he kept, like, looking at her pictures and feeling depressed and made us feel depressed with him because yeah. we saw their whole story. So, the way, not only that she died, but that they also, like, kept bringing it up and, and remembering us that she died on the next episodes, um, I just thought that was really well done, I guess. Yeah. That's, um, like, I think I've talked to you about this a little bit, Roberto, right? Like, with Fuka? Yeah. Okay. So, you're fine actually discussing that a little bit then? Cause this yeah, because I kind of already know. It's gonna be well. It's gonna be heavy spoilers for everything that happens before and after that in Fuka as well. Mm. Uh, yeah, go for it. You sure? I I kind of already know, so it's like, all right, go for it. It's fine. Well, I'll forget. Yeah, the the reason I wanted to bring this one up is because this is actually very similar to I guess Clanad and everything because it's it's one of the ones both that it the the whole series like built up from the beginning like the first couple of chapters of who this character was and how she was different how cool she was and everything and then gave you such a deep bond with her like like i said she's my absolute favorite character in all of anime and manga like she's just that good of a character and then just out of nowhere she just gets killed off and just like crushes you and it's 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 not just the fact that that happened but it's also Everything after that, like, the, the main character, uh, because he was so attached to her, everything he does after that is based off of either something she would have wanted to do, or because, like, this thing happened, he couldn't do this, and all that with her, and all that, and just everything, like, his entire world revolves around her after that. And it, it shows you, like, all the time of, like, what it's like to actually lose someone, and it makes it very powerful and very impactful. And it also shows... It's a it's a weird side of it as well that I've kind of really never seen before, which is someone who almost fills that role for you, like someone else who steps in because there's a different character that looks very similar to her, acts a lot like her, and just is is almost like a copy of her, and even has the same name. And it's like it's it's weird seeing how people can deal with stuff like that as well. And it's it's just been I mean I was super pissed when it happened. I fucking hated it. It like. I, I stopped reading that manga for a few months. <laughs> Just stopped. I was like, I'm done with this shit. And, um, yeah, like, it's, it's been a very, very emotional ride, I guess. And it's, it's made me think a lot about a, a lot of stuff like that. And it brings up a lot of stuff like where you're talking about all the memories and everything with Clan Ad. Like, it's brought up a lot of the memories and stuff like that with her as well. Yeah. And also, like, for all of us who have lost, like, close ones before, like, in real life, we, I think we all know that the worst thing isn't even, like, that moment of the death of that person, but it's what comes after. You know, yeah. like, those few yeah. days after are tough. Like, really tough. Not even and, days, man. Months, yeah. years, and everything. Depending on how close you are to, to the person. So, yeah. the, yeah. So, when when a show manages to capture that feeling of not just the moment, but the the following weeks or months or years or whatever, that's when I feel like it's the the most effective and realistic way to deal with that kind of situation. It, it helps with it, too, if you already dealing with something like that, because in, in a lot of cases, you can actually see them essentially triumph over that stuff, just accept it and move on and make them a better person and everything, which is good, which is cool. And it definitely helps you deal with that stuff and everything, too, I guess. Yeah, yeah, that's right. That's a good point. It's a weird, um, little, weird little tangent there. But okay. No, that's, that, that's good. That's yeah, good, it was good. Yeah. Um... I just was not expecting this to get so deep and like. We're talking about death, CJ. Yeah, I know, but it's we're talking about it as like deep. a plot device and everything, and we're all going way deeper than I thought it would. Which is I, cool. It, it, it gave me some <laughs> personal memories, so like, yeah. I was almost crying here, like honestly, like a few minutes ago. But, um, anyway, so get getting more to the like the way that's used for the plot and everything in a more like I guess not not a said way. Uh, when we think death, I kind of think death note as well. The show that note. Um, and uh, there is one character that dies in that show. Like, there are many characters that die. The show's fucking. Yeah. The whole death show note. is designed yeah. about <laughs> killing characters. Exactly. So, I, but um, <laughs> there, there's one major character that dies at one point, sort of close to the end. Um, have you guys all watched it, by the way? I don't know. Yeah. think I should. Okay. Clecker, Clecker hasn't. So, let's not say the character name or whatever. Um, but in a. 
a lot of people feel weird about that death. Um, and I personally, like, it's not that I hated the show because of it or that, like, because some people say the show went downhill from there. I don't necessarily agree with that. I, I feel like the, the other part of the show was still fine. But the way they killed off that character, to me, kind of defeated one of the biggest plot points of the show and one of my favorite plot points of the show, which was the whole, like, intrigue between those two characters. Yeah. And, like, the fact that one of them just got killed off, like, I don't know, like, six, seven episodes before the end in a very pathetic way. Um, I don't know. To me, kind of just felt like... I, I don't know how to say this, but I just, just didn't feel right. And not in a way, like... That the show made me feel like sad, and because of that, it was well done. I didn't even feel sad. I was just irritated. Like, why would you do that? Like, mm. so I, I just wanted to hear what do you guys feel about that. Mm, go yeah. ahead, Roberto. Um, try to remember. Yeah, me too. I mean, I I kind of I was actually kind of stunned a little bit at that point because I I didn't expect him to to go, you know, when he when he did, right? Because he had been kind of like one of the biggest driving forces and like you said it was almost integral to the plot yeah. of the interactions between you know Kida and him so i was like really surprised that that happened but also at the same time i was like oh my god he pulled it off holy shit yeah. right so it was a really big turning point for me and whether or not i thought the rest of the show was good or bad is kind of stems off that point i guess all right oh that's fine i i just wanted to see like how you guys feel about that cuz i do know like I've, I've had people tell me before, like, that the show ended there for them. And I just wanted wondering right. if you were, like, if you felt that way or not. I forgot most of the stuff that happened in Death Note, so. Yeah, okay, me that's too. Fine. <laughs> that's fine. That's I have a, a terrible memory. Girl. Let's see what other shows have death. You have a terrible memory or it wasn't worth remembering? Both. <laughs> um, I'll say another just has very creative deaths. <laughs> like. Yeah. Why does oh, another. Sound so familiar? Okay. Because we have we watched, watched it, it together. <laughs> it's the one where, um, shit. How would I describe it? The the curse, and that like one student is the curse, or just one yeah, person in to... the room isn't supposed to be there, and all that. And... Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah, I remember. Um, that one had a lot of very interesting deaths. Yeah, I did. I have yeah. Have you guys seen all the pie stuff that came out of that? Yes, what? I have. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, 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 I got it. Because there's, there's a lot of people that have made fun of a lot of the deaths and a lot of the scenes in that, where they'll take, like, whenever something, like, someone's body apart or something's about to explode because it gets hit by something or whatever, they just put a pie there instead, like, a red pie. So you see, like, everything red that flies out looks like it's pie filling instead. <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> That's ridiculous. I'll have to that look for that. That fits the and show perfectly. There's just a lot of random stuff. So there's just pie guts everywhere and stuff instead. And it's it's hilarious. And, oh um, my god! It's it's funny because it changes how much the show like it changes so much about the show by doing that. <laughs> Just seeing those scenes redone like that are ridiculous and hilarious. And it does like show how I guess how much the plot of that show relied on all the deaths and everything, and how not even just how unique they were, just how many of them there were really, and how yeah how gruesome and brutal people can be towards each other. I was gonna say for the most part, like. You didn't get the same attachment to like, like I, I at least didn't get the same attachment to most of the characters that died. But just like the fact that it ha- kind of happened all the time, that I was, I was like, oh, I wonder like who's the next one or like what's going to happen now and which way they're going to die because like the first girl f- dies with a freaking umbrella going through her neck. Oh god, that one was yeah. brutal. So I wasn't sure like, if I could keep going with the show when I saw that because I, I mean, think, I believe I was the one who recommended it to you guys. Yes, and yeah. Uh, I, it was hard for me to get over that, of just like, holy fuck, this is like Final Destination level of like ridiculous shit. Yep. So, let's see. But the, the manga we're reading right now, Lost for and the Biscuit Hammer, also, uh, handles deaths in a cool way, in my opinion, cause. Oh, they give so much build up and backstory first, just to make it that much more impactful. Yeah. And it's funny, cause like, they spend yep. like all this time in the build up, and then the death itself is like super, like, quick and objective. And when they die, it's like, well, holy shit. Well, that, every that time in character- itself oh, can be a metaphor about death. Yeah. Where it's like right. your yeah, life is so long say. and everything happens and you can just be over in an instant. Yep, that, yep. that's true. That's a good point. It can, and, it can all just come to an end. And every time a character dies, it's kind of like used by the plot to make another character stronger. So. Yep. I am very happy with how Lucifer and the Biscuit Hammer handles death. Um, one series that actually a lot of people like a lot, but I don't know if it handles death very well, 
and I, I I'm still on the fence about this is so Attack on Titan, right? Mm-hmm. Yes. Attack on Titan. There's a ton of death everywhere. I feel like some of the deaths mean absolutely nothing. But then there's some times when they actually handle it pretty well. The one time I can think of off the top of my head is when um, what's his name? Aaron. There's Aaron. What's the badass guy? What's his name? Levi. How am I forgetting Levi? When Levi's like core team just gets slaughtered, oh, yeah. and they bring and they bring them back, and just like that actually hit me really hard. I was like, oh my god, this is terrible. But like some of the other deaths. Like I didn't feel like meant anything to, like anything to the series. So that series in general does a little like a weird balance between the two. I guess two. one of the cool things about like, that show is that in in the first part there's like there there's like two or three episodes where oh, it almost God. seems like they kill the main character. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's another that very well. interesting thing. I like I that just... that. I just remembered that first episode, man. Fuck. Oh yeah, there's that. Yeah, too. that that first episode just like it, like I, at first you're just like, okay, this is pretty peaceful. This is pretty p- peaceful, and then just boom, boom, south yeah. real quick. Um, but that's an it, like a thing I want to bring up is the mother's death, right? So the mother's death never really gets brought up that much. But it was important. Like, it was yeah. it was important because it showed like it showed a harsh reality of the world. Yeah. Um, I, I and say it's it was more important first... because it made Aaron look at the person he is today. That was that was the big turning that. point for him becoming like crazy about killing all the titans. Is the way I see it, at least. But yeah, yeah, I could see that. Um, but uh, it's that that series has a blend of both meaningful and non meaningful deaths. A series that has zero meaningful deaths, well, that's not true, it has one, is Dragon Ball Z. Who cares about death in Dragon Ball Z? Well, you can just come back. Everything's fine. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. (laughs) The only time death ever mattered in that series was when Krillin died from Frieza. And that was the only time it mattered, because that's what triggered Goku to go Super Saiyan. But, other words than that, death meant nothing in that series at all. I don't think they ever killed a single person in that series, besides Krillin. Well, I well, guess they killed him, but... The villains? I mean, technically you couldn't come back if they wished you more than, like, twice. Like, you have to stay dead. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> um, but, but you brought up a good point with that. So, like, there are just some shows that don't do death right, where they just kind of like, eh, people died. So, one of those specifically was... I was watching Akamega Kill... Like, oh, yeah. I think last season yeah. or the season before. Yep. And, like, the first character that died, I honestly didn't have any sympathy for her because yeah. she literally said, the, like, right before she died, that, like, if I kill you, like, the, she was fighting someone. She's like, if I kill you, then your weapon stops and my friend won't die. And then it's like, her friend's in danger. Let me turn around and try to save her and end up dying instead of killing the, the person she should have killed. And pretty much at that point, once they kill off the first character, you're just like, well, they're just going to start killing off everyone else, right? So I didn't really feel for all the other characters later on. That is one reason yeah. why I absolutely hated Dog and Rampa. <laughs> well, that's like one of the main reasons that, and it uh, just, I don't know. It, it didn't make the deaths like that impactful, really. It was kind of just like, okay, somebody died. That that's going to happen every episode. Cool. But I almost feel like that was kind of point because you knew from the beginning people were gonna die like i feel like the whole premise of the show from the beginning where it was like of those 12 kids 11 of them will die and one's gonna like succeed or whatever that was yeah. like the setup so i i never expected to like get too surprised by the deaths i guess because I, I i didn't see them killing any of the main characters i was surprised by the first one though because i thought she was going to be one of the main characters but whatever but i totally get what you're saying like the deaths are kind of just random um, oh, a series that handled deaths extremely well, um, or at least I felt like they did, was Sword Art Online. That was the one I was going to bring up next, yeah. Um, they did a fantastic job. Even when you thought someone died, you felt every inch of it. For example, when everyone thought Asuna died, everyone was, they they felt it. They Everyone yeah. was like, no. As soon as you see that no, explosion from her, it's just like, holy no. fuck. Yeah, like, yeah. and it it 
they did such a good job of building up the emotions, even in the beginning of the series, where he's in a party and he's over leveled for this party, right? And this one girl oh, in the party just guild. dies. Oh. Yeah, the first guild. And the girl dies. Like, you see the aftermath after that. And you see him, like, during a Christmas event, desperately try and get this thing to bring her back, only to get disappointed because the thing can only resurrect something that's happened in, like, two or three hours. Oh, no, it wasn't that. It was, like, ten seconds, dude. Uh, it was, like, ten seconds. It was seconds. something extremely short. It was, it was something extremely short. But it, like... He, like, you see him, you see that affect him, and, like, the message that she leaves for him, just, like, oh, oh, it was so tear-jerking. Yeah. And, like, they did a very fantastic job of, even when a death didn't happen, you still felt it. You still felt it, and was like, oh my god, no, that didn't just happen. Um, so, I felt like they handled death extremely well. well and was... even in season two of the series, they retouch back on death a lot um for those who haven't seen especially at the the final arc yeah yeah Moses the final man. arc mm-hmm. uh, yeah they uh, touch all, a lot on death in that arc and stuff and it's it's a f- it, they do a fantastic job of it oh, yeah. i can't express that enough they they definitely show the harsh reality of death and everything very well in that and it's it is even though they they do use it a lot in the in that show especially in the first season it's um it's 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 weird because they don't overdo it even though they kind of do it at the same time because it's it shows it's one of the other things that shows just how harsh of a reality the world they're in is now and it shows like because that even leads to explaining a lot of the reasons why there's a lot of people on the first floor that just stay there and they've been there for years like literally they're a shop vendor in a video game and have been for years because they're that's too what afraid i would do. To do anything else there's no way i would like go fight like the bosses and shit like they do i just like stay on the first floor hanging out <laughs> Yeah, like probably be a merchant or something. I don't know. <laughs> I would, I would train the like. I'd just train and perfect my skills, and then I'd probably go take on some enemies. Okay. Uh, I I just I'd probably min- be a tank because I like protecting people. So. <laughs> you would be uh, what's his name from uh, Log Horizon? <laughs> Damn no. right. Um, That's exactly what I was thinking. <laughs> I was like, yep, I'd be him. Uh, I was going to say, the only thing with Sword Art Online for me that I wanted to bring up is that, like, for the most part, and that's this is a personal thing for me, one episode is not enough to get me attached to a character to the point where I am that um, moved by his death. And it's kind of the same problem I had with uh, Angel, Angel Beats, where I didn't really care as much as most people because I felt like they only really build up the character right before he died. And it was kind of, like, too quick for me to care enough and that's kind of how i felt about the deaths in the first season of sword Island. line however the one i did care about was the one in mother's rosario because i felt like there was just more time in there to develop it so well i definitely see like where it was well done and, and where you guys are coming from just like personally when it's that quick that it happens i just don't don't feel it that much i guess so that's why clan ad was so meaningful to me because i yeah i was attached for like 40 episodes to that character so I've got a few manga and anime I'm probably going to recommend to you then, Dan. If you want your feelings destroyed anyway. (laughs) Sure. (laughs) I've got a few that do major build-up like that, and they just crush you. Yeah. He's like, you want to be emotionally scarred? Here you go. The build-up in Sword Art Online was pretty damn good for the one episode that they did it. uh, Because on the first, I don't know if you remember this right, but on the first half of the first season of Sword Art, like, pretty much every episode there was so much that happened, or like... Like the if you if you missed one episode of that show, like it would be so oh, far. Oh, you were fucking ahead. lost. Yeah, exactly. Um, so like that's what would happen. Like in the beginning of the episode, they would introduce all those characters, build them up during the episode, and then kill them off at the end. And that was like extremely well done for one episode. But one episode was just not enough to make me like get super attached. So I was usually like, oh, okay, she died. That's kind of sad. But moving on. See now you know, with like, that before like whenever whenever Asuna like supposedly died like how did that how did you handle that one? Oh yeah, that's that's a bigger deal. That that was that was way more of a bigger deal in that case because it was being built up before. Yeah. But yeah. Um let's see. So one thing I really hate is like fake out deaths or like yeah. They make you assume this character died but not really. Oh like they with Asuna will... there. <laughs> yep. No, no, not in that sense. Like I'm talking more about shonen Oh, like there's a lot of times, yeah. yeah shonen ah. deaths are just the worst sometimes because they're just like they make you really invested in this character's death, and then it's like, nope, he's not dead. 
Fuck you. I'm yep. sorry you had to read so much Bleach, Roberto. It's not just Bleach, <laughs> Naruto too. Like Naruto has done it several times. I mean, Bleach is notorious for like not killing off characters. At least Naruto does kill off characters, but there was one in particular that I was like super invested in his death, and then it's just like, nope, he didn't die. And I'm like, wow, fuck you. See, this and many of the other reasons I've specified are why I will probably never want to go towards, like, the action shonen stuff, because fuck all that. Yeah. I find some interesting things in the action shonen, but that is... I've already specified what I like in action shonen. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, there are, like, meaningful, meaningless deaths, like Roberto is saying, like, I, I also don't like. But I'm... is there's There's gotta be one in One Piece... Dude, so, like, I knew Ace's death was coming, and yeah. despite knowing it, when it actually happened, I was like, oh my god. Destroyed, just, yeah. Just, just because of the way it was presented and how everything went about well, his death. N- not only that, like, think about how much Luffy went through mm-hmm. to try and save Ace. Like, he literally was on the verge of death, and, like, he had to go through so much shit, and to have it not like prevail in the end like it i guess that's it was one just thing of well done deaths is that even if you see them coming or you know about them they they can still like make you feel sad oh yeah, yeah. when they're still that impactful knowing this like you can see it coming from miles away like that's like i said that's one reason why i stop clan ad where i do because i'm already sad i already yeah. see it coming and it already hurts so i'm just like i can't actually and go like, through with this anymore <laughs> When I was watching Clannad, everybody did the favor of, like, not specifically telling me what happened, but being like, oh, man, get ready for the fuse on season two, or, like, you're going to cry like hell at the end of season two. So when I started seeing a little bit of build up towards what could happen, I was like, oh, okay, I got this. I know it's going to happen. And I, I totally called it, but still crushed me just because yeah. of how well it was done. So, yeah. Uh, anyway, um, unfortunately, it looks like we're. Almost yep. out of time here, so it's time to go ahead and wrap up here. Um, so yeah, that was actually a much more deep and good discussion than I thought it would be. I thought that wouldn't actually yep. be that long of a discussion for some reason. <laughs> anyway, cool. Um, so yeah, let's uh, let's um, go and go over what we're going to be doing next week. So next week we're going to be going resuming with uh, Lucifer with the Biscuit Hammer. We're going to be doing Volume Nine, which is. 54 through something chapters i don't have it written down right now or in front of me but um then we're also going to be because we actually have a decision on what our wild card is this week which is um this one that was actually recommended to me by a friend who's going to be a surprise guest next week for us so look forward to that and um yeah we're going to be watching princess tutu and talking about that yes because you wow you're very excited about that roberto (laughs) have you actually seen it before so no, but what I've heard, it is nothing what it looks like at face value. Okay. Wait, what? Okay. Yeah, okay. we're already watching we're Princess Tutu. Okay, I feel like there should be a princess in it, but there probably won't be. I'm just saying, like, it looks like one thing, but it's not. Yeah, that's kind of what I've heard okay. a little bit, but um, yeah, we're going to be doing uh, episodes 1 through 13 on that, and then we're going to be doing the second half the week after that. And um, yeah, let's go ahead and go around to her... Tell everybody where they can find them at and everything. If you want to go stalk them or read their anime list, see what kind of see what kind of compatibility you have with them and all that, because that's one thing we do every now and then. I remember mine with Dan yeah. tanked after I gave uh, Code Geass a bad rating. <laughs> <laughs> so Dan, where can they find you at and everything? And just follow me on Twitter at Lima Daniel M. And if you want to see my anime list, it's Daniel M Lima. So that's all. All right, and Roberto. Yep, you can pretty much find me anywhere as RJR2992. And click him. Alright, you can find me at Twitter at O-H-K-L-E-K-E-R at Twitter, O-Clucker. Or you can find me anywhere else as Boclex, B-O-W-K-L-K-S. I thought it was K-L-E-K-S. K-L-E-K-S, sorry, I'm messing up my own stuff. <laughs> Alright, um, and yeah, you can find me pretty much anywhere as Boom Coffee. And did any of you already go over where you can find the podcast at? Nope. Didn't think so. Yeah, you can find the podcast at uh, pseudorandompodcast.wordpress.com or pseudo underscore pod on Twitter. And we usually post when episodes go up and everything there, so you can find stuff there. But you should have links to like everything else there as well. But um, yeah, you can also search for Pseudorandom Entertainment on YouTube and you should be able to find us as well. And um, 
yeah, that about wraps it up. So thanks everybody for listening, and hopefully you'll tune in next week as well when we talk about Princess Tutu, which I have no idea how that's gonna go. Yep. All right. All right. Thanks everyone. See you later, guys. Bye. See you guys Peace. later.